<laughs> All right. Grab a piece of paper, get your affirmations. I still need my paper. I wonder how much I could auction these books off for with my drawings. All I need is a photocopy. <laughs> Lots of drawings. All part of my development. And yours, actually. So Whitney, talk to me. You're the only one that really likes to see me talk to me here. Everybody else is camera shy. Um, tell me how your day's going. How you're feeling. You're you're pretty well connected to your energetic side. So everything's uh, happening in live live action. Um, so many things have changed. In like, uh, I'm staying in this little town called Phillipsburg, Montana, with my friend Charlotte, who's been my friend for ten years. Of yeah. years, <laughs> and um, she's a spiritual soul sister, and she just uh, lost her business and her job, and just a whole bunch of things have happened to like place us into a new spot. And um, the energetics last night, uh, I can you hear me? Saying that, yeah, yeah. Um, last night, I could. I, it's been about two weeks since I've eaten meat. I, I stopped being able to stomach it, and I would throw up at night, or something would happen a couple weeks ago. And um, last night, it. I mean, I'm just saying it raw, but it all came out. It just it couldn't. <laughs> so my body is kind of rejecting. I think it's now rejected everything from, except maybe fresh food. We just got uh, disconnected, I think. I lost you, Whitney. Did you guys lose me up? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. It's the it looked like it just uh, put me out of Zoom. Um. So everything got pushed to this one day today, and uh, it's just really fascinating how things are playing out. And when you said earlier yeah. about, can, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Cut it out. They're like looking. Yeah, maybe we can go inside. So, uh, when you said earlier about being about a year in front of what uh, you know, people are going to be experiencing, um, it really does feel like that. Like, uh, uh, there's all the, it, the, the theme seems to be a male dominated control. That's, um, uh, but I think it's not, you know, maybe typically male. It's just um, that as a female, we put a lot of effort into certain things. And, and a lot of the people that <clears throat> have come in with a more heart-centered, you know, there is a difference, you know, in people. There are some people that just do not have that empathy. And it takes a long time when you have, are an empathetic child and you come into a world that's not empathetic to find your feet. You can hear me? Oh, okay. So, um, we're just... Have my phone by me. 
Did Mike did Mike jump off? I don't think that I heard anything I was saying. I, I can hear you, Whitney, but I'm not sure about Mike. Me too, some gravy. Okay, so um, it looks like Mike might have dropped off, but he, maybe it was his bandwidth. We're, we're still going? I can hear you. Yeah. So uh, isn't it 434? So we've got like nine minutes, right? <laughs> Does anybody want to share anything that they wish for? I know I wish for all the resources to fund being able to build as many of these devices and give them away as possible. I would love that. That would be excellent. Yeah. I'll tell you what I wish then, Whitney and uh -huh. others. I wish that unconditional love mm -hmm. be active all over the peoples of this earth. I wish peace over the people of this world. I wish that I ascend to the fifth dimension and spiritually and physically. And a few others. They are the most important ones. Yeah. A soft, gentle, unconditional love in the hearts of all beings on this planet. That is correct. That brings us up to the galactic uh, feeling throughout this universe and other universes. I'm imagining that. So we can uh, we can imagine 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 near is the word together. Yes. yes. Here we all doing it anyway. You know, I'm picturing that. Yeah. I can really feel the energy flow between us. It's, a, it's remarkable, really. It seems as if Mike's not got back online here. So I was also, oh, from Lori, I wish for world peace, no more pop, oh, your message popped off. Can someone read uh, Lori's message? Or Lori, can you read your own message? It says, I wish for world peace, no more poverty, no more hunger, no more disease or cancer, no more Illuminati or cabal, no more suffering. I wish for health and happiness. She says, I have a lot of background noise here. <laughs> a beautiful wish. Thank you, Lori. That's a comprehensive one. That's a really good wish. Yeah, I think I want to write that down and put it on my list also. <laughs> well, I wish that all the uh, accumulated densities would just dissipate with ease and grace too in our bodies of all the things that we've accumulated over all this time. That's a good one. It's what they call karma. Is that right, Whitney? Yeah, I feel it. I'm starting to feel where um, the perception we hold actually you know, is making your body right now, and it kind of tears at the new. There, there's, there's just a razor's edge. 
you know, to where yes. you really feel like if you're following the pain down to where the beginning of the pain is to get all that stuff out of your plasmatic or your, your body system. And I don't even know if we can get it all out on our own and how much has been downloaded to us that we're battling that we don't even have to deal with. So that, yeah, that personal cage that you don't know you made. Yeah. Well, I understand before we come to earth, we actually plan our existence and every little thing. So mm -hmm. we should be able to get rid of all that pain. Uh, you know, we are part of the divine, so we should be able to get rid of that. And you're right. That's a, that's a great wish. I don't, a while back, um, Mr. Kesh was talking about um, in space, you could get a space virus where <clears throat> if you weren't holding your, um, like I envisioned the halo around uh, the Jesus's head or what Mike was talking about, how you could practice uh, seeing the lines connect inside your head. Um, so you generate that force field around your emotional brain and that you're everything in your physicality is flowing out from that non-physical crystal formed in the middle of your emotional brain. And it really makes sense that we can generate a force field that doesn't allow anything else to come in. But so Kesh was talking about in space, which I was thinking is happening just now. Anyway, your arm could suddenly disappear if you, if you didn't know how to block other frequencies or other um, uh, things coming in. So it, it feels really real in my body that way. Like uh, I, I've been feeling a lot of pain for the last two years, but it's always been a very learning thing. And, um, but it, it, it shows, it shows exactly the next thing to uncover or to, to unwrap. Um, yes. It's, yeah. No, I understand that fully. Uh, you, you go through pain and also it's financial too. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it, it's known as the zeros. As you ascend, you have to have, uh, you seem to have to have zero uh, in finances, zero in uh, friends, zero in life force, and then you cleanse yourself and and you ascend. That's as I understand it, I'm, I've known so many people who've had that. I've gone through a lot of it. In fact, uh, you know, I've, I've lost a, a real heap of money. I couldn't understand why, but now I know. You've really got to go through those those experiences, and uh, that that will purify you, as it were to ascend. It's an extraordinary process, but we all know what's going on. We all are leading and leading by example. And uh, I think, you know, we're all very aware, but nothing will, can harm us really because, you know, we are uh, what we, you may call a fragment of the divine. So we do not get hurt by this process, we just experience it. And that experience is ex very necessary for each one of us. And as we're sort of aware of what's going on, these experiences are much more uh, arduous for us. We, we get heavier experiences, if you like, than most other people because we learn quicker. And we have to, as I say, lead by example as we go through those experiences. Does anybody else have any ideas on it? This is just a personal perspective. And there's millions of personal perspectives out there. Billions, in fact, because there's billions of people. Happy solstice. Happy solstice to you. Happy, happy solstice. Happy solstice. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I think it would be fun just to sit and, and send some energy towards each other. Uh, and uh, I know we are engaged in this, but this is pretty special for us to be on the phone together uh, at this moment. I agree. May all your wishes come true. Do we need to go burn our wish list? Uh, but as I uh, put Mike out of commission, I think we, uh, he said at the solstice we burn it, don't we? So, Laurie, we're going to take a 10 minute break. Good. What, six minutes, I think, was the, the, the window. Um, I was outside, uh, grounded. I had my crystal reactor that I made, okay? Uh, the crystal central core. I had my crystal reactor that I made, okay? Uh, the crystal central core. And I burned my paper at the moment of the solstice. I didn't see any flash myself, okay? Doesn't mean it won't be recorded somewhere in some spectrum, okay? Um, and maybe it's in the, the spectrum that we can't visually see. Uh, maybe that's why I can see it with my mind and not with my eyes. So, I'm gonna have a cigarette, guys. I've been kind of going through this little, ooh, upsetness, and then I had to laugh. Because when I tried to load up all of my uh, reload all Zoom, okay, and tried to reload the Messenger, um, for the first time in my history of using Messenger, uh, I got a red bar across the top that says could not load messages. And uh, I tried to open up my Zoom. Uh, it would open up, but it was like I had a blank account. Uh, all of my meetings that were scheduled were deleted out of there. Um, you know, not visible whatsoever. Um, but went outside, stood barefoot in the dirt, said my blessing at the time of uh, the solstice. Um, and I could just sit there and laugh and go, that was the universe telling me that the timelines had merged. That's, I needed to be at, outside, I needed to be grounded, um, I needed to be out in the energy. So uh, that's where I was. And I came back in here four minutes after the solstice and uh, I can get on just fine. So <sighs> what a beginning. <laughs> Let's play this. So, right now, can anybody, uh, I think we were talking to Whitney before we got cut off here. Um, what else have you been experiencing, Whitney? We just had a nice, uh, my friend Charlotte and I, burning of our wishes. <laughs> and uh, standing outside for just a couple minutes, that was, um, boy, it, there's just uh, like a current of energy going through my body. So, um it's something yeah. is shifting and changing. It's uh, it's reorganizing the cells on this on the surface of your skin. Uh, you're going to become very sensitive, okay. Um, and eventually, when this transformation is complete, okay, in our skin, it's 
going to be impenetrable. Um, you know, we always think of diamonds as, you know, the hardest substance or carbon. And uh, the light body that we have, you know, for the human body uh, that we're in, uh, this special feature, this is your Iron Man suit, <laughs> okay? Um, it's a part of your android skeleton and all that kind of stuff. Android is not what we believe it to be as, as in robots, okay? But it's living uh, uh, living entities grouped together, okay? Uh, just like we're here on Earth, uh, we have all of these different races and, and things like that. We're all different aspects, okay? Um, your body is a bunch of different aspects. It's not all the same GANs or neutrinos, right? So it's got different neutrinos that are holding it together to make the different organs. Well, Earth is no different, okay? We have to have the diversity on our planet in order to keep our organs in place, okay? Um, but that's all shifting. That, that's what happened, right? You know, at the solstice, that's what shifted is that she no longer um, is threatened by us. You know, she understands our intent. And that's what jumped into the new timeline, into the golden age, and out of the grasp of the AI. Uh, the AI is finished. You'll probably hear about it. Um, you know, coming in the future. Maybe you won't. I don't care. All right? It's done. It's over with. It's not a stress of mine anymore. Um, you know, and... It's not saying that there's still not some remnants out there, okay? But they'll be brought to the surface and they'll be identified because when you, you know, have the awareness like we have of everything that we have experienced in in our our lifetimes, okay, the culminated lifetime span, um, you'll the reason why we lived or we it took so long for us to evolve is because our memories were erased every time we were reborn okay so we didn't have the collective learning all right uh of learning from the first mistakes that we made okay and we repeated 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 and repeated because we couldn't remember what we did previously well, now you're going to remember what we did previously in, in all of your lifetimes, okay? and you're going to be able to learn from each one of those mistakes that you have. Those are the emotions. That's your past life history. Um, that's what they mean by taking responsibility, okay? And uh, you have to learn from each one of those on how that was accomplished, what created the situation, okay? What, what conditions were in place um, to create that that situation and that's how you can recreate that emotional spectrum that emotional factor okay in your wall um, when I say your wall I'm talking about the inside of your org field okay it's your it's what I need to explain today I think that's what's on my mind um, let me finish my cigarette here. What else did you have with me? Please remind me, please remind me, guys, that um, I need to talk about that, okay? My mind is going 100 miles ahead <laughs> right now, and I'm trying to keep up with it and explain it to you as I'm seeing it. And it's a lot of data, a lot of information to sort through. So I, I've learned, Whitney, that you are... You're like the ATM card holder for me, okay, right now in this group. Um, you and Crystal uh, from the your group uh, have that ability to put your card in there, push in your PIN number and say, hey, Mike, this is the question I have. I need an answer, and you get an answer right then and there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a, this is how this team needs to work. <laughs> Okay, I have a lot of information that I have access to. It doesn't mean I know it. Okay, it's not stored here. It's just I have access to it, and uh, I need you guys to think of the questions and think of the things that the people need to hear. Okay, and be explained uh, in simpler terms, and uh, and we can make our models and our uh, drawings and things like that based off of 
that explanation to to help give them the visualization, almost like a coloring book. You know what, Mike? What ties in with that? And I was the whole idea of this key. <clears throat> Um, I think really needs to go out to everyone that's building the the bio, the, the bio key. I guess is what it comes up in my head. But the um, your signature key. People need to know that they need to put these on their devices. Uh, but what I'm seeing as far as the device showing us how we work our own body, um, that being completely genuine is like that key. Yeah. So when you live completely with you know, completely genuine, not afraid, you're not hiding anything, you're not afraid of, of, of anything. That's how this key is in the physical part, but we can do it in our body. And, and um, I can see my two layers. Like I can, uh, can see what other people's perceptions of me are and then what I feel my perception of myself is. And, you know, I've been weeding away different perceptions and, the um, perception of always being a little different or um, uh, not able to really handle the world the same way as other people. Right. Even though I, uh, I've been in business, but the whole, everything about business is what makes you want to vomit now. You know, it's just uh, about money, not about creating unity or, it or is. It, doing a beautiful project together or giving them themselves. <laughs> it very much so is. And, 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 I'm fighting that dilemma right now with the Infinity Project. Okay, um, I refuse to support the system that we're trying to bring down. Okay, which means that new models have to be made, uh, new business models, and that means that uh, do I need to be registered as a nonprofit? Hmm, absolutely not. You know, um, do I need to be registered as a business? No, absolutely not. You need to trust me, okay? You need to be able to feel my heart and my intent on, on what's going on, you know? And that's what they're going to have to do with you if, you know, you're promoting the Infinity Project, and we want to build communities like what Crystal and, and Kiki are doing in that group. Um, when you build a, a, a community, we're just going to build the central core, okay? And then the people that come are going to learn. And if they choose to stay, then they will build and continue the same model, okay? And our cities are gonna become circular. And, you know, they're going to resemble a lot of the shapes that you see that I'm creating myself, okay? Because that's how the energy flows in the universe. And if you want harmony, you gotta get out of this grid system that we've got, you know? We're not in a grid, you know, everything is spherical. And if you take a slice of that sphere, it's all circular. So, you know, and that's that's where we're moving with all of it. First, we've got to get the community started, okay? But they're more of a transient-style community, okay? That's the way it needs to be designed. Um, you know, people will come, they'll learn, they'll detox their bodies, okay? They'll heal their bodies. Um then they'll learn, they'll be one with nature. They'll get uh, a dog or a cat and a horse, most likely, to care for and learn how to trust themselves and the wild animal, okay, as well as a domesticated animal. You'll learn the communication skills and what they want and, then, and things like that. And then we're going to have our gardening, okay, the grounds where everybody's going to go out and touch the dirt, plant something, create beauty, um, and then there's going to be the classroom time, you know, which is you're going to learn the science. And when we set up these models, okay, that's all we're doing is we're just setting up a layout for other people to be able to uh, model on, okay? We're, we're leading by example. And, you know, that's where the, the donation dollars and the emotions and things like that coming in. Uh, I absolutely hate money. I really do. But I'm good with large chunks of money and breaking it up into pieces for budgets and saying, okay, this is what this is, okay, and not going over any of that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm really good in that kind of money, money in that sense. So I can always stay within a budget, but it takes money to fight money. And that's what we're doing right now is we're trying to exhaust money, which means that we want to give everybody as much money as we possibly can, and that way they can be bored with it. And these devices offer individuals the opportunity to start their own business. 
you know, if they want to be certified by the Infinity Project, all they got to do is submit one of their devices. Okay, well, I'll inspect it, or you know, people will inspect it for true Infinity, and then it's working. And then if you make your devices always that way, you can be Infinity Project certified. You know, raise the value of your your product because you're learning from um, you know gifted people and that's what you want. You want the quality and the simplicity. Well, if your stuff costs about $25 to make and you're selling them for $200, is that really fair? You know? Um, recently, I had a, um, a conversation with Avalon Soul. Okay? Uh, I firmly believe in the equal energy exchange um, notion that he had. Uh, that he talks about. He speaks a lot of truth. Um, but there are two individuals there. <laughs> there's the ones that's typing, okay? And there's the one that you talk to when you have your meeting, okay? They seem to be separate individuals. And, you know, uh, that's his voice. That's the source. And the... Equal energy exchange for him is money, okay? And in his explanation, he says that you have to pay money in order to get out of this matrix, okay? And if you watch the gods of Egypt, that came out to be true when uh, the... Man, I can't even remember his name now. Anyway, one of the gods said that you had to... Um, pay in order to get into the afterlife and they were using gold as the exchange or anything of value and uh, that's ending okay but now we are giving with our hearts okay and our souls so they no longer have to purchase these they just need to make them okay but if they do choose to purchase them then they have that option it's kind of like they get the, the best of both worlds Okay, so, uh, you know, it's better if you make it yourself, more personal, you have more vested interest in it, you have a better understanding um, than if you purchase it. But if you purchase it, you'll get smarter anyway. So, you know, that's why we are, we're offering these for sale. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a standard, okay, of that these devices are not going to be $800, okay? One IQ, you know, is less than $15 worth of materials complete if you do the shopping around, okay? I get all of my stuff at the dollar store. I get my copper wire. You know, you can get 25 feet at the, the local hardware store for 5 or $6, okay? The glass container, the hot glue. You know, all of that stuff. But you have a total of maybe $15, okay? So I want to put a cap on all Infinity devices, okay, of not more than $200, okay, ever. And I want you to be able to sell them. I want you to make a profit. I want you to have a good life, okay? And it's designed to take away the distraction of money. Because these are so simple, okay, your materials are so low, it takes just your time and your energy to know that you're making one of these and you're basically giving them angel wings, okay? You're giving them access to their higher self and you're doing them the ultimate blessing that you could possibly do and you're allowed to make money on that, okay? If greed overtakes you, okay, and you start not sharing or whatever it is that you're doing and you're just doing just doing it to make money now, then your your higher self is going to kick you in the ass and it'll all like fall apart. Okay? That's karma. Um, so you've got to be sure that your intent is true when you're making it. So you can make as much money as you want. You understand? There's only a few hundred of you people that are watching my videos all right, out of seven and a half billion people on the planet. That's how many customers we've got if you want to run a business. Okay? Um, as soon as you make a device purely out of love and it's purchased with 
money that had different intents attached to it. Okay, as soon as you accept that money and purchase new materials, and you purchase, uh, you know, the shipping and everything like that, you have basically emotionally laundered that money. Okay, and every time that you go out and spend that money, okay, when it changes hands with somebody, they're being infected with your goodwill. Okay. So, you know, this is what we call, you know, emotional laundering of money is that you're accepting something that maybe had some harsh stigma attached to it, okay? And then you're going to revert it back into something uh, much more positive, okay? So as long as your intent is good, you'll be fine. Now, if it's really easy for you and you've got 15 friends out there and you're all making these devices and you charge $200 a device, do you think that's really fair? Okay. Listen to your morals. All right. If it's just a single person sitting at home at their kitchen table like me, okay, making one at a time, then sure, you know, make it worth your time, especially if you, you've got to go have a job. Okay. I'm fortunate that I don't have to at the moment. Okay, but my pay is being threatened at the moment, and I don't know if I'm going to get paid for the next three months. Okay, the games have begun. My situation is changing. Um, I believe that the universe is telling me that I need to be waned from that old system. Okay, that old money, and I'll be given a new source of money. And I have no fear. I don't care about money. I hate it. Okay, and if I don't have money to pay the bills then guess what? I don't have internet. I don't have that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, because those things are still controlled. Uh, so we got to think about those kinds of things. Uh, you know, in my previous posting, we were talking about how the IQ will replace um, the fuel source in your car. Okay. It'll start producing hydrogen inside your chambers, inside the engine and burn the hydrogen before it burns the fuel. Okay, so now you've just turned your car into a hydrogen electric hybrid, <laughs> okay? And, uh, you know, and all of the, the meaning and the senses of it. Uh, that very same device can be plugged directly into your wall outlet right now, okay, as it's, you know, described and being made. So there's a lot of things that you can do to you know, protect yourself right now. Um, there's got to be some some changes, some poops and bangs and and things like that. Okay, to completely start off our fireworks show, as we call it, um, on this roller coaster ride. And if anybody knows how to get a hold of Teal Swan, okay, I've sent out some messages uh, to her telepathically, and I'm hoping that she's hearing me. Um, but I would like to uh, make a connection with her and help ease her mind um, about how quickly we can uh, take care of the surface population of people and transform them. Um, I believe that we've got to exchange some energy codes between us and, uh, you know, do some assertion and sealing of our, our timelines here. So, uh, if you got a hold of her or you can, I'd be interested. Um, I believe my wife is trying to get a hold of her through the Ask Teal website that she's got going on. Um, but I think it would be a very interesting uh, meeting between our souls. Um, and I'd be, I'd love to know what she has to say about it. So, but the new timeline is here, guys. What are we going to do about it? I want to explain to you, that's what it is. I want to explain to you about the inner side of your auric field, okay? Your movie screen. You have to take the time right now to imagine that you've got a flexible soap bubble that's around you. And Everything that you know is inside of that bubble, all right? What we see or what we think is an invisible bubble, okay, that's around you, 
You're just like, uh, it's like being in uh, the womb, okay? And being in the inside of your, your mother's stomach, okay? And it's inside the womb there. And it's an amniotic type fluid that is light and fluffy, if you can imagine that, okay? That is basically what it would feel like to be in your stasis chamber, okay? Being in your stasis chamber means that you are kind of in hibernation and you're not fully awake yet. And you've got this alarm going off in your head that says, wake up, wake up, wake up. It's yelling at you, screaming at you, all sorts of alarms right now, okay? It's go time. But the inside of that auric field, if you've ever been to, um, what are the movie theaters that, uh, the big domes they projected over the top, uh, over the ceiling, and it's, it's a big dome. But they're like 3D movies, okay, without needing the 3D glasses. Um, It's the same aspect that we have here, okay? Your head, your pineal gland is the projector. It's the light, okay? So if you could picture, and I want to, I don't want to deal with this echo here, but I'm going to do some drawings. So let me hook up. All right. Give me a second. I'm logging into my other account. This is Zoom. Or my iPad, I mean. So, you know, my crown chakra is on fire right now. I am receiving some downloads. I am so very sorry, guys. check yes one you can ask some questions please do all right I need to know if you can hear me por favor The question is, how can we become more conscious? Okay. The first part is to uh, be aware of what conscious, being conscious is. Okay. And if we change the word conscious to aware, okay, then we are doing just fine. Okay. There's a lot of emotion that is attached to the word consciousness, okay? Uh, a lot of uncertainty uh, because of the disinformation that has been put out there uh, around our planet and our world right now. And we've got to fight against that emotional stigma. So if you start telling people to wake up and be more aware, you're telling them essentially to do the same thing, okay? Um, to become more aware. Be aware of your surroundings. Become more conscious of your surroundings and the way your body feels, okay? 
uh, if you don't drink soda on a normal, you know, regular basis, all right, and it's been a couple of weeks since you've had one, uh, go drink a half a soda pretty quickly, okay? Pay attention to how it feels when it enters your body, okay? Look down at your veins. You'll probably see them pop out as your body absorbs this mass amount of sugar, okay, and tries to convert it, okay? Then the next day, after you're done, after you've had this, notice where all the aches and the pains are in your body, okay? Wherever those aches and pains are in those muscles and under the skin and, you know, whatever, for me, it's in my neck and in my shoulders. That's where all the soda crap resides, okay? So when I drink a soda, I can feel the next day, I can feel where all that crap is sitting. Okay? And it's causing me discomfort. My body is telling me, ah, I don't need that. Okay? Even if it is just a, a subtle soreness, okay? you might attribute it to uh, going out and you know, maybe cutting firewood or you know, doing some physical labor. Okay? But in actuality, it's the food that you're putting into your body. And when you become more conscious... It's just being aware of the way things are operating and, and why they're succeeding, okay? Uh, becoming aware of how your plants are growing, okay? That it needs a certain amount of sunlight, a certain amount of water, a certain amount of pH in the soil, a certain amount of, you know, uh, nutrients or, you know, whatever, okay? You're learning all about that because you're becoming more aware of the needs of the plant, okay? Well, your attention to that plant is making you more consciously aware of that plant's needs, and you're making a connection, okay? This is why homegrown food tastes so much better than store-bought food, okay? My wife told me yesterday, um, she made a very profound statement that hit me right in the chest like a cannonball, and I knew it was very important, and she said, you know, honestly, okay, we were talking about uh, uh, rolling a joint for our marijuana, okay? And there is a noticeable difference for me, okay? Because I use it when I'm meditating, okay? Uh, there is a noticeable difference from the weed that I ground up in my plastic grinder versus the weed that I broke up with my fingers. And I told her, you know, I had a, a profound difference um, in the effects of it. Same weed, different effects, makes you wonder, you know, at least for me. And so when I, when I made mention of it out loud, she turned around and said, well, yeah, the plant got to know you before you destroyed it. And you literally, you know, yeah, it got to know you. It, you know, it touched your skin. Your energy field was there. Okay, your intent, you know, what you're doing with it, okay, um, is transferred to the plant. It's not burnt yet, okay. Uh, it may not be alive, but the energy field is still there, so it's transferred, all right? That makes sense to me. And then when you burn it, it's just like when you're burning the paper, okay? You're returning your intent back into the universe, so therefore it heightens it. And it made so much sense for me on that, on that level that I wanted to be able to share it with you, okay? And not necessarily the whole smoking a joint thing. If you have it before, you need to, at least once, okay? Or at least three times. Um, I saw a meme the other day that uh, said, if everybody on the planet smoked a joint at the same time, we'd have world peace for at least two hours. And the economy would have a boost in snack, uh, snack foods. So, you know, I promote the use of marijuana for uh, meditation purposes, even for recreational to relax. Um, it's so much safer than alcohol, so much safer than your prescription drugs. It's so much safer for, um, for you in all aspects, <laughs> okay? Uh, I'd much rather meet somebody who was constantly or perpetually stoned on marijuana than somebody who had, you know, got Vicodin running through their veins. Um, you know, or Prozac or, you know, fluoride, whatever. Um, it's those people that 
we pick up all these extra energies from because they're freely giving them away. And, you know, you get kind of, ah, back off, Jack. So that's how you, you become more conscious, as you put it, okay? You've seen my disgusting picture, <laughs> I call it, of uh, me meditating. And, uh, you know, that's just, that's what it looks like when you get the skin and the muscles all relaxed and you're just a pile of skin and muscle and bones that are being basically held up by the position and the air around you. Uh, being in such a relaxed state and not be asleep. And um, when I'm there, if I have something that's particularly bothering me, you know, when I say bothering, take away the negative connotation, okay? Um, take away the negative emotion to that. Because if you don't, um, then you automatically conjure up a negative emotion, okay, with that word. So when you hear things, um, hear words, okay, like the word, I've, you know, issue or problem or, you know, a situation or whatever, a condition, don't think of it as a roadblock, okay? Don't think of it as a stopping point. Think of it as, okay, this is a, a, a conditions point, okay, which means that you have to meet certain conditions in order to open this gate up for information. Okay. And that's what we're, you're looking for. And when that happens, you're able to, you know, uh, connect to your higher self and you're going to hear a voice in your head. You're not crazy. That's your soul talking to you. Um, you know, I call it the narrator voice. Okay. You know, when you're reading a book, uh, and you, you get into character, it's you you get the emotional connection to it and all of a sudden you're the voice in your head you, the the narrator as i call it you get start getting the voice inflection and the emotion that's attached to the book now and that's your soul okay so this is why you i you'll always see me have things that you have to read okay because when you read that voice is working all right that voice is working in your head and you know for some people you know like me i look at every word all right some people look at you know a, the gist of it like my wife she can read a whole book in 4 hours it's crazy uh she speed reads and uh you know <laughs> it's been a long time since i've been able to look over her shoulder and see what she's reading and keep up with it because, you know, by the time I'm finished with the first three sentences, she's already done with the whole page. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's how pretty intense it can get. But your abilities are going to come to you like this. All right. I have no idea where the hell I just went. Somebody, please. <laughs> wow. We're all following you. You didn't have to stop. I don't even know where I was at. I just like I got hit on the head there for a second. <laughs> I think that you, you were talking about how our abilities are going to unfold. Oh, my. Yes. Uh, there is. That show, uh, Heroes, that series that was on TV for a long time, probably about 10 mm -hmm. years ago now, maybe, maybe even longer, shit, I don't know. Um, that series, you should pay attention to, okay? Because that's the way it's going to start and unfold. Um, is that people are going to be like realizing, oh, shit, I can fly. And it's not going to be everybody, okay? And uh, they don't understand it. They don't know why they're doing it. You know, they, they're not in the plasma community. They're out in the real world, okay? And they've been trapped by this business model that we call society right now. And uh, they're going to start jumping around and figuring out what the hell's going on. And they're going to need us. Okay. And I say in about six months, you're going to have what looks like a candle around the head. All right. Your halos. That's what's the images. Now, 
where I get my information from. There is no time, okay? It doesn't have a timestamp on it. I just see the pictures and I get the emotions that are attached to that, okay? The emotion is all the data, all of the words, the uh, the feelings, the sensations, the breezes, the temperature, the, you know, all of that stuff. That's the data, the emotional side of it. And I've got to interpret it. But I see uh, a very large group of people um, with halos uh, being connected to source. And it's fun. But you're not going to be able to hide it. You can't exactly put a hood over the top of this halo thing, guys. All right? So uh, meditate. You get into that relaxed, relaxed state, okay? Um, if you don't have it, you saw that picture of me, okay? And I'm sitting in a giant foam beanbag chair. It was like 150 bucks, 200 bucks for this thing. And you can put two people in it comfortably in uh, the lotus meditation position. It takes the pressure off of all of the joints. Uh, you can fully relax. Uh, you're suspended basically on these this, these cubes, these cushion cubes. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's something I can do with that, you know, on the plasmatic realm. So I'm literally sitting on a, a bubble of energy uh, while I'm meditating, but I haven't got that far and I don't want to, tear up my I call it the floof uh, but if you can I recommend you guys buy one free meditation okay especially you're going to be teachers of infinity and you'll find that your best position for teaching is not standing up pointing at a board it's sitting down in the lotus position um, so that you can connect to source while you're educating people uh, even while I sit here in this chair um, I'm still pretty much in the lotus position. My legs are crossed, they're underneath me. You know, um, I've got my unit that's sitting behind me back here that's interacting with my energy field, okay? Um, so, I mean, this is one way that you can learn how to use these devices as well. Mike? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you describe again how you see the energy coming out of the crown and how to visualize the geometry there with the um, you know, different points coming out of the soft spots. Because when you're sitting and meditating and, and we're activating these lines and bringing them, them together, imagining it in our head, we're training our head to do it. To create yes. that aura. So I know you've you've spoken about that before, but can you speak about it again? Yeah, right here on the screen. Okay, you see I've got a rodent coil. Okay, uh, one that I made, and I, I, I show you the uh, I show you how to make it. All right, very simple. All right, but this is the way stars would look if we only could see the energetic field. We're on the infinity sign, but not your. Uh, you're not sharing. If you have something you're showing. Where? Can you see me now on the big screen? Whitney, I think you had to double click on his other icon. Maybe it's me. <laughs> there's another, oh, there's another icon. Just click on my screen. Oh, hey, I just learned something. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. All right, you good? Can you see it? All right, I made these little rodent coils. All right, this one's just been nano coated with uh, uh, some caustic, but you can see that it's forming uh, a GANS coating on it just by sitting in the air. All right, but put your body in the very center, okay? Your feet sticking out the bottom down here, all right, and your head is right there at the very top. Let's see if I can point this out to you. Okay, your head would be right here at the very top of this ring, and then your feet would be hanging out. Okay, this would be your torso, right? So if you put yourself inside of that center there, 
okay? This energy field is rotating, all right? And then there's another energy field that's identical to that, that's underneath it, all right? So you have two stacked ones, and I don't have two of these right now, all right? But there's two of these on top of each other. One is spinning in one direction, and one is spinning in the other direction. Okay, so if you can visualize two of these coils stacked on top of each other, like in my uh, previous reactors, let's see if I got it here. Um, I'm pretty sure I got a picture of it when uh, I made it with the little batteries, uh, my power plant, as I call it. Let me see if I can show it to you. I went on a rodent coil spree. Where did you go? For some reason, I don't have pictures of the, maybe you guys aren't supposed to know it yet. Let's see what these look like. All right, can you see that on your screen, Whitney? Everybody? Where? Oh. Man, I don't want to draw with my fingers. It's my higher self playing jokes on me. This is a pretty, pretty close depiction of it, I guess. Um, but you can take if you're to take both of these okay. and uh, get a different color here. Remember, I've always told you that it takes two to tango, right, guys? All right. So it would take two of these coils that are right here stacked on top of each other to make your eight. Okay. And if you're in reference to uh, looking down from the top or seeing the spin from the top, but looking at it from the side, okay? So we're looking down from the top here, right? That means that the top reactor, your top uh, energy field would be spinning this direction. Okay, and then bottom one would be spinning in the opposite direction. And when it does that, it creates your toroidal vortex right there in the center. It makes a connection, okay? It does it eight times. When you get your eight times going on, all right, your eight chakras that are inside of your body connected with your pineal gland, okay? these two fields okay this field and this field right these two fields join and become one and that's your outer aura okay this moves me into the movie projector idea okay of trying to explain what you see okay and remember all i'm doing here is recreating the shape all right i'm treating what i see in front of me as a two-dimensional picture when i look at things all right and then when i look at them two-dimensionally i can see their energetic fields shaped like this all right and all of the eights because I'm just taking a slice of it, 
And instead of trying to take in the whole three-dimensional picture, I only need two dimensions of it, so I'm saving time, okay? I don't need all the details in the background. I don't need all the details between the spaces. I don't need all the details that clog up the decision-making process, okay? So this is why I like to explain things in pictures is because I can draw on them and they are already two-dimensional for you, all right? It's a method for teaching that I'm attempting and trying. Now, oh, come on. When it comes to, let's see, it was only pictures. Yeah. Uh, you'll see like this picture up here, this one on the top. Okay. This is just one wire. I just made loops on two ends, the two ends of the wires, and I twisted them together, and then they were connected together in one in the center. Okay. So uh, basically, I made a bunch of circles, okay, with the wire on one end of it, okay, and then, you know, I left enough on the beginning part of the tail here, all right, to wrap around this central core. All right, so that's where you get the wrapping in on that side. And then on the other end of the wire, I made a bunch of circles, okay? And again, I had still enough in the center, okay? A little tail of wire, extra wire, that I wrapped again right here, okay, in the center. And that's what closes this off. And then now you've got this toroidal field that is connected by one single wire to another toroidal field, okay? And so you've, you're able to put the distance that you need between your two coils to create the magic in the middle, right? This is a purpose for this, okay? And it's perpetual and it's no different than uh, the same uh, set up like uh, the S coils that we do, okay? Where you've got your coils that look like musical notes, right? There's no difference here except for the shape and the way that you're you're holding the energy, okay? It makes the same exact thing, right? This is the language of light. This is the language of infinity, all right? Uh, this is what I base it all off of. And this is why you see me doing the red and the blues all the time, okay? Because if I tell you that the blue is the magnetical energy field or the, or the positive or the giving one, that's the one that you're trying to create, okay? Then that means that there has to be two black ones Okay, two black wires, which are red polarity. I say black wires, meaning nano-coated wires. Okay, that surround it, right? So you create the surrounded shape. And wherever this wire is not wrapped around itself, okay, the energy field doesn't exist. Okay, and when I say that is, let me point it out here, okay? There's gotta be a red right? And you see the little yellow dots on there, okay? In between the yellow dots is where the blue is going to make be made, right? So this energy right here doesn't exist to all right it's not there until it reaches this point okay and this is where the meniscus comes in all right like you would on a beaker the energy field will be strong enough 
to create a little dip, all right? And I call it the pantyhose effect because if you were to slip something over the top of the of a coil like pantyhose, okay, it would kind of cave in on itself a little bit, all right? And I've given classes on this. So you want to pick the strength, right? You want to count the strength here then you can do so because you've got one, two, three energy fields here, right? And you've got one and two energy fields here. So now you've got a slight imbalance, right? And that creates the potential difference. Now this right here becomes your source because it's bigger, okay? And the bigger will always give to the smaller. So now you've created your rotation without using GANs, without using anything. This is just your energy field rotation around the device that you make. All right. If we were to take this S coil and lay it flat, right, we would see that. it would look like this, all right? If you were to lay it flat and you just had the coils in there, right? And we're going to highlight this side as being a little bit bigger than this side, right? Okay, that'll identify the bigger coil versus the smaller coil. All right, and so now you're going to be able to see the energetic field that's being created here, okay? Generally speaking, okay, a good judge is to take the distance of your one side of your coil and just draw a circle around it, okay? Make it proportionate. Use a compass if you want to, okay? And you can see a size difference, right? Now, you know that the bigger is always going to give to the smaller. And if that's source, then the source energy would be red or negative polarity. And it's going to move from here. So this would be your negative side. And this would be your positive side. Let me change colors on that. Okay, plasma moves from negative to positive. Electrons move from positive to negative. So now you've created your flow of energy. And it's going to then go from the positive side, switch its polarity, and jump to the negative side because it's got nowhere to go. You've created its purpose and you've closed the loop. Okay. Well, this toroidal field or this energy rotation here is going to cause this side. Let me change my color here. It's going to cause this side to rotate this way. And the other side. To rotate this way. Okay. And what happens right here in the middle? It starts to rotate. The energy, okay, you got to visualize this that now there's a little pocket right here. All right. It's being influenced by this rotation and it's being influenced by this rotation. Okay. So if it's going this way, let me get a different color. If the energy is moving in this direction here, okay, and then moving in the opposite direction on this side, what kind of resulting spin is going to happen? Okay. It's going to have a counterclockwise spin. 
it's going to follow the path of least resistance. Okay, so you're going to have a magnetical or a positive auric energy field that is produced from this kind of a device. This is why it's feeding your bodies. Okay, we've flattened it down from three dimensional, which is what you see in the picture. Okay, because this is standing up, by the way, it's standing up on end. All right, this is a three dimensional picture of the S coils and what it what the energy field looks like okay now the S coils are just simply a two-dimensional version or a slice of it and you can understand a little bit more with sacred geometry in the previous episodes that I uh, have recorded okay so this is how you can identify the polarities of your devices all right bigger will always give to the smaller therefore making the bigger end of anything the negative polarity okay the bigger spiral the bigger toroidal field the bigger uh the amount of uh, larger amount of voltage the larger amount of field interactions okay the big will always give to the smaller okay are there any questions so far About the spaceship, when we hear what the Merkaba, um, John Bolo Melchizedek says about the possibility of our personal spaceship, other people tell about the same capability uh, named Telos and this contained in our DNA but not activated yet. Uh, do I know about this? Uh, this is your double diamond. Um, organic DNA blueprint, okay? This is your um, your light body. Yes, I do know about it. Um, and I was teaching about it a little earlier. Um, but that's your double diamond organic human blueprint that they're referring to. And you're going and to learn that uh, our you will have the ability, and I strongly urge you to watch the Gods of Egypt, guys, all right? You have to go buy it or rent it or whatever. I think we rented it on Amazon uh through our roku device or, or whatnot but um go watch it okay and pay attention to how the giants okay the gods um how their the surface of their skin turns to fire or energy and then all of a sudden their armor appears and their wings appear okay those are the kinds of imaginative things that you need to be thinking about because that's what your body is capable of, okay? Um, the gods of Egypt is disclosure. If you're, you're not familiar with what disco disclosure is, say. Um, so this is what your bodies are capable of. And uh, yes, it's, it's coming. <laughs> I promise. It is coming, and this world that we know it has just changed. All right, I need the whiteboard. I want to take a few minute break here. All right, if you guys need to go to the bathroom or go do something, um, uh, we'll do you know, five or 10 minutes. I'm not going anywhere. Personally, I just want to draw this on here and not try to explain it while I'm drawing. So, um, take about a five minute break. You guys will see me drawing on here.
Sorry, guys, I lied. I did have to leave. I did go get my stylus. Did I miss anything? Okay. Earlier, what I was talking about, okay, is how the pineal gland is a projector. And I'm going to do my best to draw my depiction of a human head. Okay. Gives the belly a fat nose. Chin, throat, shoulders. Okay. And right here in the center. All right, I need to know, can you see the drawing on the screen? Please. Yes. All right, thank you. All right. This is somebody's eyes, okay, their brow. But right here in the center of the head, okay, if you were to take your finger and or a pencil or something and set it on the very tip of your ear and point it in towards the skull, okay, you will find that there's a little soft indent there, okay, like a soft spot, okay, and there will be one on the other side of your head as well. Now, if you were to connect the dots between the two of them, okay, it would cross right at the center of your pineal gland, okay. So that kind of gives you an idea to reference in your own head right where that's at, okay? But now we're gonna say that your pineal gland is your light source, okay? For this movie projector, right? And this movie projector shines its light through your third eye. All right, and it's blasted out in front of you. You can't see this light, all right, because when it interacts with the playing field that you're, you're in and this holographic image, okay, your eyes create a connection of energy, okay, and this is where the double slit experiment will come in and why the human eye or the when light is being observed it behaves differently than when it's not being observed okay in the double slit experiment the arrangement of the light particles okay or the light waves was different than when it was being viewed by an actual sentient being okay when that happened Okay, it's kind of like your eyes are emitting an energy field. Okay, kind of like lasers, like Superman, if you want to think of it that way. Okay, and wherever your field of view is, it's activating everything in front of you so that now it's reflecting light back in certain colors and certain shapes. Okay, and that's where you get the material world around you. All right, but we're going to say that this projector, okay is here this is the light source okay let's put our little movie reels here well, where did my drawing go <laughs> these are your little movie reels okay and the information that goes into these movie reels okay is your media the things that you see in the world okay your uh homeless if you've got it okay your radio frequencies that you can't okay that you can't comprehend you've got your cell phone frequencies you've got all of these other things that are programming your brain some of them are energetic fields okay coming from satellites some are coming from the earth right 
Some are coming from the food inside of your body. Okay, so we're being bombarded with all of this information to program your brain, okay, to send information to this pineal gland, right, that says, this is the movie that we want to project, all right? Your third eye is your filter. If your third eye isn't open, all right, as we call it, if it isn't open, meaning if you're not seeing or feeling through your third eye, okay, then that means that there are no filters in place, okay? It's basically, it's a, a free flow. It's open. The dam is burst, all right? So whatever you want or whatever is being programmed is actually being projected out in front of you because you're not in control of the filters on your third eye, okay? The lens, the focusing, as we call it, if you were to you know, turn this into a, an old style movie projector, reel to reel movie projector. Okay. So that information that's being fed into your brain. Okay. And into your pineal gland is being projected outwards. Okay. On the inside of your auric field. Okay. That's your movie screen. Your field of view is your peripheral vision. Okay, so your peripheral vision is what's activating all of the matter, okay, or what I call the playing board, the game, okay, the buildings, the, the couch, all of those things that you see, okay, it's activating it and it's giving it color, it's giving it uh, your attention because you are making an electrical connection to that matter at the subatomic level, right? And it's coming back and your eyes are reading it a very specific way, okay? So you really have to act or feel that you're in this little womb of a bubble, okay? And wherever you turn your head, it doesn't matter because your eyes are activating that movie screen in that part of your peripheral vision, okay? And for those of you that are gifted, okay, you'll be able to look up at a little blue patch of sky, okay, that's pretty bright out there, and you'll start seeing little dots, bright dots that are flashing and swimming around, okay? You might even be aware of little gray shadow things that are, um, you know, what people call floaters, right? Those aren't floaters. Those are nanobots, okay? It's a living entity. And the little flashes, I think they call it scintillation or, or uh, something like that, where your eyes are, are, you're seeing these little sparkles, okay? And they try to take away that ability for you. Okay, if you're inside of here and then inside of this bubble and it's a movie screen, right? Those little particles that you're seeing are on the outside edge of your Merkaba, all right, or your outside edge of your energy field, okay? And you're seeing the living entities, okay? that create the liquid crystal kind of display, the living liquid crystal display that we call matter in this holographic universe, okay? And so you're seeing these in all of your peripheral vision. And when you realize that you're focusing your eyes, you're relaxing them, okay? So that your eyes are focusing about two feet out in front of you. That's what happens when you stare at the sky, okay? And so your movie projector is projecting the image that you want to see of this world, okay? Onto this inner wall. And so you're sitting in one of these theaters, okay? Your own personal theater, watching your own personal movie right now, okay? 
and your screen is about two feet out from the end of your reach. In other words, you can't really touch it, okay? But you're going to become aware that it's there, and it will always be about two feet out in front of you and around you, okay? As far as your little movie screen is concerned, okay? Now, your energetic, your consciousness is reaching much further out there, right? And so when you interact with somebody else, okay, and their energy field, okay, we'll, we'll say that it's somebody else's energy field out here, all right? When you interact with that, okay, they still have all of the information that you have as far as the same playing field is concerned. Okay, so you're sharing the reality that you're living in. Okay, you're exchanging information, right? Because, you know, this energetic field is rotating in this direction, okay? And this one is rotating in the same direction, right? But when it interacts between us, right, it's interacting in this direction and it's interacting in the direction here, which causes the rotation of energy between you to be gravitational, which means that you're attracting of each, of each other, okay? It's the sharing. And so this is how you exchange the information on an emotional level, but you're still sharing the same movie screen, okay? The same video game, the same holographic image, right all the same mountains the same roads the same structures everything is there the only thing that's different is your perception of how this movie screen is being played to you that's why everybody's perception is correct you may not see colors the same way that we see colors okay because theirs is slightly different and that's okay Okay, but being aware that this is a freaking movie screen in front of you, okay, and when you see that movie screen, when you're looking up at the sky and you can see the little entities swimming around, they look like electrified sperm, okay, you're seeing the edge of your auric field, your auric field. That means that you can control it. It's yours. Now, beyond us, okay, beyond these uh, energetic fields, okay, I feel like it's the fluid, it's space, okay? It's that fluffy liquid that I was telling you about, okay? The weightlessness, that's what surrounds the bubbles that we're in, okay? And... Uh, Marley, you know, one of uh, uh, the people who's been following the Kesh work and my work, okay, she made the reference to amniotic fluid, okay, which is a perfect description, I guess, if I was to remember what amniotic fluid felt like, okay, and maybe I did, and that's why I was able to open my eyes after my meditation and feel like I was submerged in a fluffy liquid where I wasn't stressed, I wasn't feeling like I was drowning or I wasn't suffocating, I was comfortable, I was relaxed, my body was floating, okay? There was no negative emotion attached to it, it was just a strange environment, okay? Because I had memory of that, okay, I automatically assumed that I had to be an adult, in order to experience that because I remembered it. You, we only think that we're remembering our um, current memories, right? We don't remember being a child. We don't remember being in the womb, okay? So what if my subconscious was trying to get me to remember what it felt like to be in the womb? Because what I feel beyond these auric fields or these energetic fields that we have in this holographic matrix, okay, 
is what we consider a nothingness, right? But it's that light, fluffy liquid, the plasma, the mother plasma, okay? And what we're experiencing is this avatar type body in this matrix, and you're viewing this on this screen right in front of you guys. You can manipulate that screen, okay? You are seeing the individual particles of your movie screen when you can see those flashing little dots, okay? If you can see the individual particles of those movie screens, that means you can see between them. What's between them? Control the aether that's between those entities, okay? Because you're a commander of the aether. I'm teaching you how to manipulate the matrix with your mind while you're meditating. All you got to do is visualize this, all right? Your imagination is your holographic chamber, okay? You're a hologram. You're creating a hologram within a hologram, okay? That's what we do with our imaginations. Now, if you broke up your thought process into three different sections, you could merge them together just like our timelines merge together. Okay, use the same concept, create that in your mind. You don't have the, um, you, you don't have the time matrix in your mind. It's only here in the physical reality. So your results will happen instantaneously, you know, or as fast as you let them. And, that's the key word, okay? The key phrase there, as fast as you will let them, okay? But just remember that your visualization here, okay, what you feed into your pineal gland is being projected onto this movie screen, okay? And you're taking back that movie screen now, all right? And you get to make your reality what it is. You have complete and utter control over that now in this new timeline, okay? But I'm teaching you how to manipulate the energy around you is to think of the space between it, okay? And imagine the space between those little entities that you can see as being kind of a, um, a little force field of energy that's, kind of, that's blue, okay? And that's the aether. That's the positive energy, the mother plasma that you're trying to tap into, okay? And so now you've got something physical to be able to look at and concentrate on. And I think it would tremendously help you guys in your meditations now with this kind of a visualization. Is there anything you'd like to add? Did you all fall asleep? <laughs> Can't unmute fast enough. <laughs> so, um, we're sitting on the steps in the sunshine visualizing this <laughs> and uh, my stomach is gurgling as things are crackling inside of me it, it it's uh it's very powerful thank you mike can you see the uh are you can you look up at a piece of blue sky and can you see these entities it takes a few minutes for your eyes to adjust but you got to remember that uh you've got to relax your eyes all right and you'll start to, you know, get into that daydream mode. Your eyes will relax, kind of a tickle a little bit. And then you'll start to see these little flashes in the sky, in the blue part. And the best description I can come up with is little glowing sperm. Yeah, they're moving around a lot. Yes, that's the end of your, um, that's the edge of your orc field. That's your movie screen. Okay your eyes receive their black holes, okay? So they absorb all of the light that is coming in. Your pineal gland is projecting all of the light that is being reflected off of this liquid crystal display that you see as these little white entities moving really fast. Okay, they're moving at the speed of creation. Okay, which means that they're in all places all the time. That's why you can have this 3D matrix that we're in. 
all right? Now, if you can concentrate on the spaces between them, all right, you might even be able to see, um, to me, I have some entities on my right eye that are, uh, they look like little wire shrimp, okay? And they're fairly large compared to the little white flashy dots that you can see, right? That is, uh, those are entities, those are little micro uh, nanobots that have been, you know, sprayed into the air, absorbed through the eyes, things like that. Um, they were the creations of the AI, and I have them on my eye. Okay. And um, what people see as floaters, sometimes it is debris that's floating around in there, but I have two very, uh, identical these little things they look like uh, walking sticks literally in, in there but they're little shadows that i can see and they float around in the fluid around my eye but they're almost identical and that's what tipped me off is to they're more than just floaties um a simple health pin okay <laughs> put in circles around my eye doesn't matter what direction um, stole the electrons from those little nanobots, effectively cutting off um, the vision of the AI. You could no longer hijack my eyes. So, you know, think about those kinds of things when you start to see it, okay? We're bringing you down into the focal point of being able to see nano creatures, nano uh, entities and when you look out at your 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 sky and you can see those little dots those are nanobots okay they create the um, they, they create the structure for the liquid crystal okay the living liquid crystal that we see as our movie screen so you know think about that okay and you control the aether you're a sentient being, that's why we got hijacked, okay? You can control the aether. So learn to find your space when you're meditating. Learn to focus on the energy. I use Tibetan bells, okay, or Tibetan bowls, uh, because there's very distinct tones that they use. Uh, there's a famous one on YouTube, it's 11 hours, okay? No, I don't meditate for 11 hours, which should be pretty cool, but um, it is uniform, okay? There's no surprises in there. There's no super high pitch that throws you off. You know, it's very, very well done. And, you know, you can see why there's so many people that, that listen to it repeatedly. Um, but I use that in my meditation because all of my sounds, okay, they turn into um, you know, if you were to look at the top of my head, let's say, for instance, okay, if you look at it uh, at the top of my head, right, and you've got your headphones on, you can hear the sounds come from different parts, okay? If my vision is this direction, okay, I'm looking in this direction, and let's say a chime goes off, and you can tell that. It, it goes off right about here, the distance from your head, okay? This is your brain triangulating the noise between the left and the right air, ear, okay? And so when it does that, it sounds like one of the chimes is going off over on this side of your head, okay? And then maybe the next time there's a little bit louder one, okay? Over here. Well, each time you get one of these chimes, it's kind of like throwing a, uh, for me, it's like throwing a rock in a still pond, okay? And I get what I call the Wi-Fi signals, okay? And it's all traveling in the same direction, okay? Because they're spirals, okay? Everything is traveling in a spiral, right? And so as it's traveling in a spiral, I don't need to continue here, but you see the Wi-Fi signal, right? Well, this is my field of view. 
when my eyes are closed. They're the same when they're open, okay? This is my peripheral vision, right? And I'm looking around in my peripheral vision when my eyes are closed into the darkness, okay? And these rings, okay, these lines appear to me, and they're coming from the source, and they're crossing over here in the center, okay? And so my visualizations come from this, and they start to overlap, okay? And this is what I call echolocation, <laughs> all right? Now, you got to remember my perspective, my point of view, my vision, okay, is headed in this direction. So the sounds are coming from behind me, okay, in this direction, in these little waves. And they join together right here in the center, right? Well, I can see my energy where these lines intersect, okay? I can see it. And so can you guys, if you were to pay attention to this. Now, when you do this, okay, it's just a, a, a ball of energy, okay? And it's not really structured of anything, all right? But you've got to create the structure. You've got to create the purpose for it, okay? So you image, you put a picture of a sphere around it, okay? A soap bubble that's trapping that. Then you want to agitate that energy that's inside of there because when you agitate it, it rubs against itself, okay? And it's kind of like rubbing your feet on the carpet while you have socks, okay? And you're getting that, that electric static char discharge buildup, okay? That's why you want to agitate it and you want to keep it moving Okay, think of it like a, a washing machine, okay, where it's agitating all of the energy that's inside of that bubble, right? And as you do it, okay, you can breathe faster. This is what they call the dragon breathing or fire breathing or whatever it is for uh, Kundalini, okay, where for five minutes, okay, you can put on a little beat of music or, or, or something and you do rapid breathing. <laughs> Do that for five minutes, okay? And then after your five minutes is up, take a really deep breath, hold it for five seconds, and then let it out. Relax your shoulders, okay? That's the, the kundalini energy. Your head should become cool, and your belly should become hot, all right? This is how you're energizing the polarity in your body, all right? When you can feel the heat in your stomach, okay, right at your navel, right at your belly button, okay, right in that area, and your head is still cool, okay, imagine the center vortex tightening up, being twisted like a, a wet towel wringing out the water, okay? That's how you're organizing and you're um, containing the energy within. No water is going to actually be squeezed out of this. No plasma is going to be squeezed out of it. You're just organizing it in a much more organized fashion so that it's more efficient. And that's what you're doing. And every time that you figure out an easier way to do something and you simplify it, okay, you get a neuron that fires from the center of your brain to the rest of all of those related topics and it connects them all, okay? And... That's how you become smarter. You become more efficient. You're learning from your mistakes, your past histories and things. That's why it's important to do the experiments and to meditate, okay? That's why it's important to make mistakes, okay? Because if you didn't make mistakes, you would have nothing to learn from. And we're here to learn, right? Well, you're done learning. You're done suffering, right? Well, this is the next step, guys. Meditate. Okay. You know, also for me, uh, you know, different sounds, okay, different pitches, different tones, okay, um, 
they represent a different line width, okay? Uh, you know, like a, a higher pitch noise or a chime would have a very thin line for it, okay? And there would be a lot more lines closer together, okay? Um, for uh, the bigger gong style sounds that you might hear, okay, you're going to get the bigger, wider gaps in between, okay? And this is how you turn sound into light. This is how you transmute sound into light, okay? You're converting it with your ears, with what you hear, okay? Your brain is processing it, and now it's turning it into that holographic image that you're creating in your dark holographic room. All right? That's what happens when you close your eyes. We're about to turn the light on in your projector, okay? Your pineal gland is about to be activated, okay? And that dark room that you, when you close your eyes, that we see the dark, okay, is going to light up. All right? And that's the activation of your pineal gland in your third eye. So, you know, think about what it is that you want to build right in front of you. Because what you build in your world, you get to offer to the 3D matrix. That's why there was temples built, you know, and carved out of, of you know, solid rock. Okay? Um, those were gifts. Not meant to be worshipped. They were just gifts. of this. These are the abilities that you have. Okay? They aren't the abilities of God. Okay, um, you know, I've, I've been getting attacked the last couple of days by a few people, you know, and if anybody knows me, okay, and my teachings, you understand that there are very little emotions attached to my words, okay? Uh, when I do have emotion attached to it, you can feel it, okay? That's the intent, right? And... You know, a guy got on there and I questioned his belief system. I caused him to question his belief system and never talked to this person before, never anything. And he just started to attack me as far as you're wrong. You can't do that. You can't just make this shit up. You can't just blah, blah, blah. You can't, you can't, you can't. Okay. And you got to follow scientific theory and you got to follow a business model. You got to do this and you got to do that. And I don't have to do any of those. Okay, and I let him know, and he immediately, you know, took it as there was emotion attached to my words and my response. Okay, and oh, you don't take criticism well. Um, there was no criticism. Okay, you were just telling me that I was wrong. Um, and he shared work of somebody else's work that best described what he was trying to explain. Okay, but he didn't do the work. He didn't do the, the figuring out. He just sees the images and it kind of makes sense to him. And I tried to explain that to him and he got very offended by that. And, you know, he came to me. <laughs> so that tells me that um, when you try to teach this stuff, that there are going to be a lot of people that will come out and attack you. Okay. Um, you know, he may have thought that I was upset or that I was angry or, or defensive in any way I'm beyond all of that guys you know you got to have thick skin as I call it to, to be part of this you know you have to be able to disassociate from your emotions and learn to draw on those emotions um, at any given point okay which means that you have to identify them you have to be aware of those emotions so let's see here Are there any questions uh, let's see here. Person says, I have seen the sperm looking thing since I was a small child. I remember I learned about sperm in school and I wondered why I was seeing sperm in my vision. It used to bother me and then I learned to blink and find something dark to look at. Darkness made them go away. That's true. Very much so true. Um, you know, uh, this is one way that. Uh, an individual has used the, the way to identify what we call indigo children, okay? Um, you're not children, okay? 
you're still an adult. You're not a child anymore. You, uh, we still think that they're children right now. You've grown up, guys. Okay. If you can see those little sparkles, then you are an indigo. Okay. That means you are a creator of this world, and you have a whole lot more knowledge inside of you that you need to sit and meditate and put your phone down. Okay. Turn off the news. Eat vegan for a few weeks or whatever. Okay. You'll decide, your body will decide for you that you won't be able to eat it anymore. Okay. Um, and meditate. Okay. Learn to concentrate on that energy and focus it because your hologram room, that darkness that you see, okay, is absorbing all of the light. Okay. And when your imagination creates the light, in there and you can see it in these forms of the the sound waves that i'm showing you okay you are creating plasma inside of your holographic room right that means that you take that energy you collect it in the center you squeeze it together like i told you all right when you squeeze it together all right like you're you're squeezing the water out of a towel all right, do this with your mind. When you do this and you get the toroidal fields interacting, okay, you have the top and the bottom. This is your, mer your Merkaba, as it's been called, okay? This is your light body activation. This is the Tony Stark arc reactor for your, um, your Iron Man suit, okay? So the easiest way I can tell you to do this is get fucking busy, guys. Come on. All right. I'm doing the same thing. All right. I'm getting busy. Your focus should be on meditating right now. Every chance you get, you need to practice your meditation. Okay. Because once you get that little spark of energy started in the center, okay, it's the projector. Okay. And you get to feed that projector and whatever the heck you want because you're aware. All right. You get to fire that up. That's your life, your energy right there that's going to fire up and power your holographic room. Okay? That holographic vision that you've got right in front of you. And when you close your eyes and you see that, okay, and that darkness, okay, you got to turn the power on. Well, when you close your eyes and you relax and you start to daydream, Oh, shit. There's a picture there, isn't there, guys? Whoa, guess what? That means you've got power to your holographic room. You don't have to worry about this right here. But this is one way that you can be in complete control of your energy. Okay? Your imagination, the pictures that form in your brain, okay, they're not matter. That's all plasma, okay? So sitting and daydreaming, okay? Get yourself a nice fat blunt or a nice cold drink or whatever it is that, that you do to relax, okay? And sit back and daydream, guys. Be very specific in your daydreams. This is your meditation, okay? And this is the creation of your reality because we're going to take what you create in your brains, Okay, and if one person, okay, I've got uh, 11 participants here in this group, okay, if I count myself twice, that's nine, okay, nine is a very good number to have, right, but let's say, for instance, here is Anuj. And over here is Whitney. Okay. And over here is Lori. Uh oh, we're seeing shapes again, right? All you got to do is just imagine that you guys are in this position, right? And when you guys sit and talk about plasma, okay, and this chats, and you talk to your friends, and you talk to you know, the other people that are doing this, you're creating this formation here, right? Remember, each one of these is a timeline, right? 
the people, Whitney, I think you made this one, right? Okay. Each bubble that's around people, their consciousness is also their own timeline their own consciousness that you're interacting with. Okay. So energetically, if you visualize this in your mind, every time you talk to three or more people, okay, your central core is three people, right? That's all it takes to create that right there. Okay. Now, let's say you're going to add other people to your group. Well, the next magic number would be six, right? Or another three, right? And you would position them equal distances, right? So now you've got that. So now you've got six people. We've, we've got nine people here. So that means that I'm going to do a better drawing of this. Okay, but you got two, and then you got three and four five, six, right? So we have nine total people. That would mean I would need to have added three more. Okay. But we understand that when we place ourselves mentally in this formation, you're creating a starship reactor. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a shirt that I'll be wearing probably tomorrow, okay? What's that look like to you? The flux capacitor, right? Well, let your imagination go wild, <laughs> okay? It's also the peace symbol, yes, okay? But it's your starship reactor, and if you're gonna put yourself mentally and if all three of you, okay, all three of you are thinking the same thoughts, have the same picture, have the same emotion, okay, and you bring yourselves together to share that, right? This is how the energy is going to be dispersed to the universe. You're combining your energies together, right? And then you're feeding it, you're giving. So you guys are positive entities, okay? Which is represented by blue, right? You're sending out the wish that you guys want, okay? And it's going to travel between your energe energetic bodies. That's why you see the spiral connecting from the outside. And it's going to push the energy because it's gravitational. Okay. It's going in this direction, right? Whoever initiates your circle is going to initiate it. Okay. Carried by the next person in your circle. This is why it's important to have a circle where you guys are connecting to each other whether you're holding hands or, you know, it could be anything. You've seen how plasma travels between anything, right? You could put a rope out there and go at the end of the rope and tie it to my unit here. And this little beeping meter, okay, will go off at the end of the rope once it's, you know, nano-coated. So think about that, okay? But if you're all thinking the same thing at the same time, okay, and you believe in the power of three, right? You complete it. I call, all right? Write down these words, guys. And this is something that my wife explained to me, okay? I call upon the God in me
I call upon the God in me. Uh, that's not right. I call upon the God in me. Um, my wife was supposed to be online helping me with this. <laughs> um, oh, that's what it is. I call upon the God in me. I summon. and believe in the power of three. Okay, this is your opening statement. Okay, now whatever it is that you are wanting, okay, after you say this, okay, you state your intent, have your crystals, have your reactors, have all of those things, okay? When you say this, say, I call upon the God in me. I summon and believe in the power of three. Make the changes, you know, if you're a poet, okay? You can make whatever you want, uh, make it rhyme. Um, when you make something rhyme, it's the path of least resistance. It's the easiest way to make, than to say something. Okay, so you have a flow. That's why we use rhymes. Okay, and hold your intention with love. Okay, while you're doing all of this. Okay, say, state what you want the most efficiently that you can make the statement. All right, it doesn't matter what comes out of your mouth. All right, it doesn't matter whatsoever. It's always being heard from your heart. Okay, so even if you mess up the words, okay, and you don't make sense to anybody else or even yourself, okay, your heart is still going to speak what you want, okay, and it's not going to mess it up. So if you doubt yourself and you don't know the right words, okay, it doesn't matter, okay, you just have to open up the gates, okay, so that you're being heard by your higher self. Okay, and that's why we use the words, the words, I call upon the God in me. Okay, you're talking about yourself. Okay, I summon and believe in the power of three. Right, and you understand why we use three, right? Because of the energetic fields that creates the walls to hold that space for the energy. Okay. And that's really what it boils down to here is that you need three people's energies, okay, to hold it right here in the middle. That's correct, Lori. It's the Trinity, the power of creation. Okay. You've heard me talk about these plasmatic walls, okay? This is what you're creating when three of you are come together in your minds, okay? You're creating the plasmatic walls, right? With your own energy, your own intent, right? And when the three of you come together, energetically, even just in chat, but the physical side, you're going to make some difference, especially those of you that are indigos okay if you understand my words you're you're an indigo so don't doubt yourself okay um but bringing three of you indigos together all right and if you were to um complete your outer circle okay with stones crystals fire whatever it is okay that keeps this energy from escaping outside of these walls, okay? It helps you harness it and bring it together, okay? Most people put a campfire in the middle, okay? 
And this is where, you know, we use campfires today is that, you know, we sit around and post it, talk about it, drink some beer, right? Um, I was just informed that they do a lot of uh, um, um, like uh, bonfire burning in, in Israel, you know, uh, during this one holiday and the people don't even realize or understand why. Um, they don't understand why they're, uh, for this holiday, they're burning, you know, this wood and all over the place. And when you get more than three people that are standing around a fire like that, you're returning it back to source, right? So your campfire talks are a lot more effective than anything, um, you know. But this is how you can trap the energy in front of you. Okay, and for centuries upon centuries in all of creation and all of the Native American ceremonies, okay, and all of the ceremonies that are being used, um, you know, with the Bohemian Club and, and things like that, all of these things are all taken into account. Okay, so don't think that, you know, that you're doing something wrong or different or, or whatever. Okay. They had the Salem witch trials to want you to be able to overthrow the government. You know, they didn't want you to be able to be independent. Well, I'm not here to overthrow any government. I can give a shit about what that government does. You know, I don't need the government. And, you know, it's a lot of people, are, oh, those are fighting words or, you know, whatever. I'm not trying to fight anybody. I don't give a shit about fighting it, guys. Okay. I'm done fighting the system. I'm going to make the system work for me if they want to be part of my reality and my life, you know, and that's why I'm teaching it. And, you know, I foresee a very large group of people that turn their back on the United States government. They're ashamed by that. And when we no longer feed them our emotion, okay, because the United States government right now and Israel and a lot of other countries that are involved, okay, with this bloodline, okay? We're ashamed of you. We don't want to be part of you. We don't want any part of you. You know, uh, especially America. You know, there's more people here in America than you would believe, okay? According, you know, to the media, you might have a few thousand people that are following this whole stupid elections thing, and the rest are busy trying to survive. You know, they're trying to survive, trying to put food on the table. And they're tired of this crap. They don't want to deal with it. They can care less. They can't afford to, to get cable to watch your, you know, your stupid election crap. You know, we're ashamed of you. We don't want to be part of this, you know, and this is the opportunity that you need, you know, and it only takes three to, to create your community. You know, you don't have to come to my location. Find people that think the same way you do and show them how this works because this is how you create your reality, okay? When I was showing you how the timelines merge, okay, and we should notice an end to the, the Mandela effect for those of us that uh, uh, witnessed it, okay? When the timelines merged at the solstice, they, they should have all been blended together completely fit into place perfectly and there should be no uh, residual effects of that the bouncing around all right um, we might still have some information out there you know like Febreze spelled differently or Bernstein bears things like that but I don't think there's going to be anything new um, that's going to happen well you're doing the same exact thing when you bring three people together guys okay you're merging your timelines your consciousness together in the same way, okay? And if you are all have the same intent, then the reality that, that is in the middle is the physical experience that you are experiencing right now, okay? If you reach down and pinch your skin, okay? That's the reality that ha happens in the direct center, okay? So you're there. 
This is your new information. This is the new tools that you've got to use your bodies as devices, okay? Because they're 10 billion times stronger <laughs> than any device that we can make, all right? And when you're done, okay, I need to add this to it, okay? When you're done making your statement, okay, with your intent, Say, I call upon the God in me. I summon and believe in the power of three. Be gone, be gone, be gone. It is so. All right? And if you want to go any you know, further, you can say, you know, I call upon the God in me. I summon and believe in the power of three. Your voice inflection is your emotion. Okay? Then... You stay, you know, be gone, be gone, be gone. My will is my word. My word is my will. Okay. That's the next line to close it out if you want to. Okay. This is being very specific. Okay. And taking charge of your energy. Right. And you will say your individual names, even in the group. Okay. Each of you will say your individual names as you're putting this together. It's kind of like putting in your password for permission to access the universe. Okay? And that's when you say, my will is my word. My word is my will. Okay? It is so, it is so, it is so. Three times. All three of you together. Okay, say, it is so. Say it three times. Okay. That's like putting the exclamation points on your intent. When you say it, you say it with emotion, okay? All war has ended. It is so. It is so. It is so. You can feel my emotion when I say it that way, okay? Summon the anger the heat that's in your stomach from your breathing, okay? Summon that energy while you're doing this, okay? And say, it is so, it is so, it is so. And exhale. And you guys will create your own realities, okay? And when we get larger groups, okay, make them break them up into threes. Those are your, what I call, you know, battle buddies, okay? We're going to go into war with these warrior battle buddies, as we call them, as, uh, you know, we'll call them rainbow warriors, all right? I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with all of that, okay? If not, you can look it up, okay? But you're going to create the rainbow orc field around you guys when you do this. You are the rainbow warriors. You are the ones that we've been waiting for. It's time to get busy, guys. All right. If you can understand my words here. In any way, any capacity, and raise a question and get an answer and have a clear understanding. All right. This is how you create your reactors and your starships and your, your reality. And as long as you got three other people, you can do it with two. You can even do it with your own mind, okay? But the power of three is infinite because you've trapped that energy right where it needs to be here in the center, okay? And you've created an intelligence that interacts with the holographic universe around you. I can't wait to see your guys' imaginations. All right.
Are there any questions so far? We're running at 7.45 now. I can say story time now is over. Um, <laughs> yes, it's done deliberately. Okay, I, I don't mind being on camera. I only look at myself on here anyway. I'm pretty, pretty handsome. Yeah, no. um, but I turn off the screen because I need you to visualize it in your own minds. Okay. Um, I don't want you distracted by all the crap that I've got back here and you're trying to figure out, oh, what's he doing back here? Hey, that's pretty cool. Well, maybe I could do that when I'm trying to talk or, you know, I need you to understand it. Um, this is how things are supposed to be here. We're moving back into um, our native ways and the native ways is working with nature, you know, native nature. So, um, that doesn't mean you have to have less than what you have now. That just means you need to learn to find the balance on how to create the energy in your cores, all right, to power your life around you, all right? And you have all the tools. You can make your toroidal fields. You can, you know, make your infinity loops, your IQs, your your health pens, you can do all of that, okay? But you don't need it. You just need to meditate, right? But if you're still trying to visualize how the internal energy is happening inside of your body, all right? Then I encourage you to make infinity devices. Make them slow. Watch how the wire wraps around itself. And it does it every time, okay? Zoom in in your mind and see the spaces between it, okay? And just because something looks closed or pinched so tight that you can't get anything, even if it's airtight, okay? Air is a molecule, all right? We're dealing with things that are smaller than air, so they can slip between all of that. And that's why you can't capture uh, plasma or light with anything other than light. You need light to capture the light. Um, that's because the walls, okay, the holes in the walls are much smaller and that's why you can use it. It's an energetic field, you know, plastic has, still has spaces between it, even though it's water and air tight in most cases, okay, this energy passes right through it. So, you know, we got to think about it in that sense. Any questions on YouTube, the news? <clears throat> are there... Any indigos out there that are watching from uh, the closed group on Facebook? If you've got any questions about your abilities or purpose or activations or whatever, you know, I don't really consider myself an activator, but a lot of people uh, say they feel some things when they talk to me. So, you know, my heart is reaching out to everybody who can watch these videos. and. You know, uh, this isn't something that has some sort of a stigma to it. Because I promise you, somebody came up to me and called me a pussy because I was working with the elements. You know, my ego might have to, uh, you know, step up and fill in that gap. You know, uh, I'm not afraid to use my ego. I'm not afraid to use my emotions. And you shouldn't be either. Uh, I know what they're capable of. I've seen them all in action. Uh, you know, when I was on Prozac, I was ripping doors off and just, so, you know, I know what I'm capable of, you know, I might look fairly small here in the video screen, but, um, uh, give you a run for your money. I'm not afraid of anybody. I don't care what your opinions are of me. Uh, I'm not here for an opinion. Um, you know, I, I do care whether or not you like me. You know, I'm an emotional being. I don't want to offend anybody. I'm not here to offend you. And I'm not here to hurt your feelings. I'm here to give you information. You know, yes, I've been living here for the last 38 years and before. Okay, I'm still human. 
but I have access to knowledge that's going to, you know, change this world and I know it. And I'm sharing that with you guys. And I really am happy that you guys, you know, uh, joined me, you know, to listen to me talk about this and my explanation. Because, you know, if you are trying to do some kind of research on the right way to do all of this, okay, the ways that, that work, then start looking up your witchcraft, okay? And there's another word that has a negative emotion uh, attached to that, okay? Witchcraft is cooking in the kitchen, people. Did you know that? <laughs> what we're doing here with plasma, when you make food gans or you make all these other things, when you bake something from scratch, okay, you are performing alchemy. The ingredients are already there, okay? Uh, but what is it that you're doing? What is it that you're creating? If you had one ingredient that was missing, okay, um, let's say you're trying to make a cake. If you had one ingredient that was missing, your cake might not rise. It might not have any sugar because you're missing it, okay? Sugar is an ingredient. Okay. Well, the plasma is the same thing here, right? You're bringing all the ingredients in to make your cake, right? You got to mix it together. That's your gans, and then you add heat to it, right? Well, when we add heat to it, okay, that means we're giving it extra energy, right? Giving it extra energy. It means you got to start somewhere, and you're churning up that energetic ball between the three of you when you're doing this, or yourself. Okay, and that's going to create the heat. Well, you'll feel the heat in the palm of your hands. Capture it. Picture it. It's there. You know, I've heard it called, you've got adamantium crystals or something in the palm of your hands. I don't know what the names are, but I know that there's something there. Okay. Um, but it's all infused into your body because you have these really special human bodies. Okay. And we're learning to turn on your computer system, okay? And connect your emotions to the physical part, all right? And that's what we're doing with that. You're training, you're programming right now, okay? To connect that. And then you're going to be able to turn the light on inside of your pineal gland, okay? And you're going to become a projector for your own holographic world. And everybody that you interact with is going to be affected by your holographic world. That's how you change other people's worlds. Okay? And if you just keep in mind that you're walking in a bubble all the time, okay? You're not really moving anywhere, okay? Movement is the... Your brain takes an ungodly amount of pictures, okay? I'd say ungodly, that's not really the right term. Um, but I think it's like 47 to the 27th power or something really big, okay? It's got like 25 or 27 zeros after it. And it takes that number of pictures every second, okay? It stores it. You've got a picture, and then you've got the emotional side of it, okay? It's saving the fact that you just had goosebumps, or it's saving the fact that you just started sweating, Okay? Um, it's saving all of those emotions, the feelings, okay, uh, around you. And so, I just forgot where I was at. What the fuck? <laughs> Excuse my language. Uh, you got attacked. So, you were talking about all of the pictures that. Um, that our body it, we're taking. Yes, thank you. Man, that was weird. It was like I somebody hacked off my, my connection there. Um, your brain takes all of these pictures, okay? And so when you recall it, or when you're seeing it in front of you, you're not seeing movement. You're seeing a series of pictures as you're moving, okay? So it's a lot like one of those flip books, okay? If you draw a little guy and it's, you change it and it's flipping through and it's, okay? Sound effects included, please, uh, you know, put that, 
on the packaging. Um, but the little flip book, that's the way our movement is, is created in this little flip book. You're not really moving. Okay. And so you're projecting what it is that you want to do next onto the next page. Okay. And that's where we have the perception of movement. But you're doing the pages in your mind. Okay. Your eyes are making those pages that really big number with a whole bunch of zeros after it that many times. That's how many pages it's flipping through in uh, every second. Okay. So that's where we get the seamless movement. Okay. Um, I don't know. Is that easy to, uh, to visualize? How can I explain that better? Because I see a lot of question marks in people's minds right now. I need feedback, guys. <laughs> Take care of me, Mike. Yes. You like that? I mean, is that easy? For me, I've never heard it explained like that before. But it's excellent. So, I mean, if you can imagine that your life right now is a little flip book with a whole bunch of these pictures that you're taking, okay? You're not really moving anywhere. Right? You've decided that you're going to get in your car and go drive down the road. That's why it feels like you're just sitting in your car and the vehicles are moving around you and the earth is moving around you. Okay? So you're sitting in your movie theater, which happens to be your car now, okay? And the outside of your, your car is the rest of the theater that's moving by you. All right. Your perception is that you're drawing those pictures of where you want to go. Okay. Your eyes are creating where it is that you want to go as you're driving. So it's kind of like you're not really moving. <laughs> All right. You have to, you have to think of yourself in a womb. You can't walk anywhere. You're just floating there. Okay. How do you create the perception of movement? And that's our universe. All right your universe, Anuja's universe, Lori's universe, use this, this would be perfect, okay? If you were to take that size difference for these little bright dots, right? We're gonna make that a little bright dot there, right? Okay, I got a little grid system, a transparent, kind of a, a light red orb a whole grid system that just popped up shortly after the uh, the solstice, okay? And all I could say was, cool, I don't know what I can do with that yet, but I can see it, which means that I'm aware of it, all right? And as soon as I figure out what those little red opaque spheres are, okay? I can't even call them a sphere because it didn't look spherical, it looked two-dimensional. Okay, it almost looked like uh, a highlighter. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Boop. It was just there's a whole grid system. Um, maybe it's the actual energetic wall of the holographic matrix. I don't know. Oh, you're eating my shirt. What's that? Somebody was just talking. You ask a question or. All right, so when we have all of these things that we're thinking about, all right, you're building it in your mind, guys. Your video screen is active, okay? Um, the more active your imagination is, the stronger your energy, your ki, your chi, your aura, your uh, internal energy, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Okay. I don't care about names. I don't care about titles, that energy that you feel inside of you. Okay. However you view it. All right. That is what you need to be concentrating on right now on an individual basis and then get together in pairs, you know, and then threes, groups of threes and practice. Okay. Say those words, say them with intent. If it's something that makes you angry, use anger. 
to get the intent across. All right. It doesn't mean be angry with people. All right. Focus your energy there. Okay. So, Mike? Yes. Now we're all connected in this group. And mm -hmm. actually, my friend Charlotte's here too, so we're 10. But we have this field going on between us right now. I'm what? I can feel it. I've made so the connection it, because we're all visualizing it. <laughs> can, can we say this all together? Like we, you can mute everybody else and just you talk, but we can all say it out loud. But you, um, you're, um, if you I want to. The God in me. And, and we can mute our mics, but we can all say it out loud from where we're at. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, I did, what I did in Hawaii, okay, when I was teaching there, okay, um, I did two weekend classes there, and we learned as we went, okay? The first group that we did, we had an open meditation, okay, where everybody was able to, you know, reach out and touch somebody, you know, on their shoulder or their hands or whatever, okay? There was a connection, a physical connection, okay? We would say our meditation, you know, clearing away of all the energies, blah, blah, blah. We would say all of that, and then we would open up the group, okay? And then at the final end of the group okay for the day when we would you know do it nobody wanted it to end okay <laughs> it's like 10 or 11 o'clock at night there in Kauai and nobody wanted it to end they just kept going but when we closed it out we did another meditation to seal in our intent okay and to close out the circles so that it wasn't just erratic all right and lost the energy was still focused right and and stayed within them and so at the end we would say this uh, you know somebody would say an affirmation okay and then you would hear me say and repeat after me it is so and then everybody would say it is so kind of in cadence okay and i'm going to tell you the impact <laughs> of those words in a very small room that is uh and I say very small, it's not really um, small, but we had about 45 to 50 people in there. And it's in, it's constructed in sacred geometry with crystals all around it. All right. And when this group, nobody's in the center of the circle, all right? But when this group said, it is so, it was thunderous. Okay. And I visualized right then that the ley lines on our planet were all vibrating like guitar strings, <laughs> okay? So I know and I understand the implications of my words. I'm very grateful that you are connected to me enough that you can come up with this on your own because I cannot tell you that, okay? <laughs> I'm affecting free will. You have to do this on your own, okay? I cannot do this on mine. If you want to get on here and read this, okay, and close out this group, I am more than happy to do that. I personally cannot do that, okay, over the internet, all right? And it's not because I don't want to, but I'm very glad that you did this, okay? You're understanding the powers that we've got here, and you can feel everybody's connection here, okay? So... If you want to close this out, okay, um, write up your little uh, uh, blessing so that you can read it, or if you know, okay, we're gonna say a prayer basically, all right? You're not gonna say amen. What you're gonna say at the end of it is, it is so, it is so, it is so, all right? I can't do this, I can't lead that, guys. I can only tell you what to do now, <laughs> okay? This is your powers. I would suggest, okay, from my higher, okay, that we can open the circle, okay, contain this energy here, and we will feed it, all right? And then after every one of my meditations, or my meditations, my classes, if one of you would like to write an affirmation that you would like to read or a blessing, okay, share it. I'll approve it. You can read it afterwards. And we'll do this and we will seal it, okay? And we will set it in stone. But I need you guys to tell me that you want to do that, right? 
because the Infinity Project is not mine. It is your guys's. It's my idea. I've got the construct for it. Okay. I've got the, the structure of the light here. Now you guys get to fill in all the gaps. And this is your energy that we're filling in the gaps with. All right. And this is how we build this structure of light. Okay. So, Whitney, would you like to be in charge of these affirmations every meeting? I don't know if I can be on every meeting, but I would like to participate, absolutely. Um, okay. And I'm, why you were... Uh, I mean, we can have a few people just like that. I think Lori wrote a beautiful, because we discussed our wishes that we were writing down. Um kind of in the middle when we all got cut off. Mm -hmm. I think Lori wrote into the chat a really beautiful wish. Okay. And we can that, utilize that. And if everybody's reading it and everybody is, is feeling Was it Lori or not? I'm not sure if it was Lori, but someone piped in there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. You got, to, you got to be the ones to do this because this is your project. Okay. This is your infinity project. And we're just trying to attract more people to us. And the more people that we gather, okay, then we can make more larger changes. But you'll see that the power of three is really impressive, okay? Um, especially when you know how to use it. You know, I'm not to go cutting off chicken heads and crap like that. That's not it, okay? That was all designed to scare you. You just need to be there and you need to have a, a good heart. Sing some music. That works. Um, but I know you can't be there on everyone. That's not that's not what I'm asking. But when you are on, you know, um, we can can we have people send it to you or you uh, confirm or you know say hey we should do this. You know, I'm not sure what I'm looking for here. I need help. <laughs> yeah, um, I can see it because right now it's it's uh, I can feel it on my body. Like doing together and I can't seem to get to the chat thing to where um, Lori wrote out what she said but are what are you saying are you are you saying that uh, so we develop a, an intention before the before the call mm -hmm. or someone offers an intention and then we go through uh, what you wrote here I call upon the God in me I summon and believe in the power of three and we keep on coming up there in my head when we say three. Uh, and then we would read what Ro Lori wrote. Is that correct? Yeah, you can read and it, we, whatever the wish yeah. list is. And be gone, be gone, be gone. My will is my word. My word is my will. And each of us would say our name. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't have to be be gone, be gone, be gone. That was just an example. Oh, okay. okay. If you're trying to get rid of other entities, okay, that are non-organic to you or, you know, or non-conducive to you, that's what you would say is be gone, be gone, be gone. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I didn't make that clear. Okay. But that, that's your intent. Your intent is the be gone, be gone, be gone. Okay. So in that place of those words, you would put Lori's wish list. Okay. And then you would say the, it is so, it is so, it is so. The power of three is the repetition of saying it is so three times. Okay. Lori, Lori, do you feel comfortable doing that now or do you want um, me to read it? You can go ahead and read it. I was just retyping it. Oh, okay. Perfect. If you're retyping it, then I can find it, I think. Yeah, then everybody will be able to read it too. Read along with it, okay? Um, when you're reading, you're visualizing the words with your eyes, okay? Therefore, you are forming the vowel sounds, you are forming the words in your mind, and you're expressing them in a plasmatic way, all right? A light energy way. So that's why you see a lot of writing and, you know, uh, things like that, so. Um, Okay, when get, so... Whitney, when you get to, uh, I wish for health and happiness for everyone, okay, or the end of it, um, then I will come on and you will hear me say, 
Repeat after me. It is so, it is so, it is so. After I say my three times, okay, you guys follow the same beat and same pattern of it is so, it is so, it is so in cadence, okay? That's how the flow of energy is, is created, okay? And sealed, all right? And we're gonna go ahead and um, once this is done here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and stop the recordings uh, after this is done and we can chat about it, okay? And remember, when you say it is so, say it with heart, okay? Like you really mean this, this is what you want, period. Get charged up, okay? Do your breathing right now. Breathe really fast for 10 seconds, okay? <laughs> hyperventilate like you're having a child or something okay <laughs> summon that energy okay remember your belly is going to get hot all right your head is going to get cool unless you're me then your crown is going to be burning um but in doing so you're separating your energies okay you're giving yourself a polarity all right you're charging it up and you're about to discharge like a static electricity discharge yes Anuj, you can speak in your mind okay you don't have to say this out loud but for us we want to hear it okay sound means everything in this universe okay frequency and vibrations so your intent is your words so get pissed or be happy or be loving or whatever energy that you that you can summon and push it. Okay? That's what we're gonna do with this. Okay. All right. Okay, so are we ready? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Says, All right. Hold on, hold on a second. So some people say it's better to focus in what we want. So the or wording. Wish, not wish. Yes. So, I wish for world peace. End poverty. Take out the word no. Okay. Take out no more and put end poverty, end hunger, end disease, end the cancer, end the Illuminati control, end the suffering. All right. Because the universe is only going to hear the word no. Which means, no, I don't want that. All right? We have this stigma uh, around it. So can you convert that in your mind? Or do we have to rewrite that? Uh, I'm just right, rewriting right now. Okay. Yes, wording is very, very important in this. Yeah, and say, you know, good health. Um, you know, whatever your intention is, guys, is what's going to come through. Okay. I personally don't care about the words, but the words are going to be what's, um, going to invoke the emotion in others. Right. And that's what we're trying to do is invoke the emotion of others. So, all right. Whenever okay. you're ready. All right. We're back. <clears throat> go ahead all right here we go i call upon the god in me i summon and believe in the power of three i wish for world peace and poverty and hunger and disease and cancer and illuminati and cabal and suffering I wish for good health and happiness for everyone. My will is my word, and my word is my will. Is this where you come in? Me. It is so, it is so, it is so. It is so, it is so, it is so. 
Wow, I can feel that, guys. Your love is strong, guys. Your love is strong. The world and the universe hurt us. So remember what you wish for. Now picture it in your minds. Picture a world with no more hunger or where the hunger has been ended, where we have peace. Poverty is just a memory. Cancer, gone, okay? Picture these things in your minds, fantasize about them. This solstice is the most powerful solstice in all of your creation and lives, okay? Ah, wow, that's an intense energy. Anybody else feeling this? <laughs> Good job. Awesome. Did you feel it? Tingling all over. Head to toe. If uh, I had to guess right now, you should be feeling about a cool wave of energy that is covering the surface of your skin. Okay. Um, when you touch the surface of your skin, it'll feel like you're sweating. Okay. Your hands will be sweaty. Should be the increase in temperature in your hands. This is the activation of your, your core, your, your soul energy as, as light workers. Um, you should be getting goosebumps <laughs> and feeling all of this energy coming through your body. Embrace it. Go meditate, guys. Sit down in a dark room with a blindfold, okay? And remember to look into the darkness because you're trying to turn that projector light on, okay? And when you do, the walls fill with your imagination. That's your holographic 3D room. Change it. It's your dream room, dream time, all right? But uh, is there any pressing questions for people that we need to get an answer for? Yeah, Anuj says he felt it. So, all right. Well, much love, guys. I appreciate it. This ends the uh, summer solstice edition of the uh, Infinity Solutions for the Infinity AAA Project and learning how to build a community without the need of anybody else but ourselves. Um, much love, guys. Namaste. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. Uh, and try to understand my perspective. I appreciate it. So Thank you. Go ahead and, uh, you're welcome. So go ahead and end recording, everybody, so that you're. Uh -oh. I almost ended the meeting, not recording. Um, end the recording so that we're done. We're all on the same page here. Thank you all. Thanks for sharing this awesome time together. You're very welcome. Everybody enjoyed. I can feel it, the, the questioning. You know, don't uh, do your research on, you know, witchcraft. Remove the, 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 ne the negative stigma or the fear that's attached to that, okay? Because, you know, you're not a bad person if you're reading about witchcraft. You're just learning how they do things. Um, you'll see a lot of similar situations in the way I organize my reactors here for, you know, plasma technology and, and nanotechnology. So you guys will understand it. All right. Much love, guys. Enjoy the solstice. Meditate. Okay. There you go. Call your practice what it is. Okay. Don't be afraid. Holistic doctors. That name will get you killed. So be a witch, okay? Be a be a wizard. Be a sorcerer. Be whatever. Be a Harry Potter, okay? Um, you know, just just have fun with life and remember to 
keep track of your emotions and why are you feeling this way all of a sudden? What triggered it? You know? And then try to replicate that situation. Okay? And if you can replicate that situation, that means that you have control of that emotion. And you could take that emotion and say, okay, I'm done with you. Put you on the shelf. So, all right, guys, much love. I'll see you around. Send me some messages on Facebook if you got questions. All right. Um, we can, uh, we'll resume again uh, for sure. Okay. Every Monday at five o'clock. Okay. Central Standard Time. And uh, we'll get it recorded. We'll have a little meetings here. We'll talk about all what we're going to do, what we need to do, and how we need to do it. Okay. Um, if you're interested and you want to get together, I live in East Texas. It's not hard to find me. All right. I've got fire pit outside. I've got an infinity tree that we can gather around. There's a lot of things that we can do out here to have fun and relax. So, you know, and, and change the world. So, you know, much love guys. I got to get out for here. <laughs> so. Thanks.